Hi, HR Nation. It's Chris Rainey. Welcome to HR Leaders, the show where we interview today's most successful and innovative HR practitioners five days a week. Uh, today, we have a very special guest. We're joined by JT O'Donnell. JT is the founder and CEO at Work It Daily. She's also a world-class speaker and a contributing author to Inc. Magazine and Fast Company. That was a lot there, JT. I know, I know, too <laughs> much. Too many things. <laughs> um, JT, welcome to the show. Um, fill in the gaps. Tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself and your career journey. Yeah, sure. So I was in HR and recruiting for many years and decided to leave back in 2001 and flip completely to the other side and start to work with individuals, professionals, job seekers. And the motivation behind that was that while I was in HR and, and recruiting, I really saw a disconnect. I saw lots of people blowing it in the interview, making mistakes on the job because they weren't getting the proper coaching. And having seen, you know, pro athletes and executives who have um, access to resources, the best mentors, the best groups of support, I knew that something needed to change. We were seeing a lot of focus on what can we give recruiters in HR to better improve this process for them, but we weren't seeing anything for that other individual. And that's really the equation, right? Employee, employer. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go work on the other side of this equation. I'm going to work with individuals. And it wasn't until about 2008 that I saw the opportunity to build what's now Work It Daily. Uh, and that was because the recession was coming. And that was the time where a very large population was going to listen acutely to what we had to say about, hey, this is how you get a job. This is how you keep a job. This is how you grow your career in difficult times. And so launched uh, the blog back in late 2008, early 2009, and went out to just said the best and the brightest out there, who's, who's giving good cutting edge content, who's talking good stuff, Let's get them under one roof and start conversations. So that was the launch of the company. And then you fast forward to today and we have millions and millions of followers on social media, thousands of subscribers to our site and growing. And really our goal is to build a community of people who invest in themselves. They, they pay a monthly subscription to develop themselves, have us be their career coaches and their mentors so that they can perform at the highest level. And what we hope is to someday have millions of subscribers who we will then be able to go back to HR and recruiting and say, those people you're looking for, those people that have been educated and developed and, and know how to work with you and put their best foot forward, they're with us. And so we'll then be giving those companies access to these individuals and really hopefully then improving that relationship that I talked about, getting them to work better together. Fantastic. Very fascinating journey that you've been on. And I think more now than ever, it's also very, very relevant. And uh, it was incredible also to see that you came into the leverage the technology in that period to be to launch the platform for where you guys are now so it was very perfect timing but without your without you pushing it directly and going out there and 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 doing that it wouldn't have been possible so very very interesting so what would you say is your area of expertise you know i think my area of expertise is that i've worked extensively on both sides so i'm able to help job seekers, professionals understand what recruiters in HR are looking for. And I'm able to provide an immense amount of data to HR and recruiting about what job seekers are looking for. So great example is that um, we call them the sophisticated job seeker. Glassdoor calls them the informed candidate, but this is a new breed of individual, which I'm excited about. Fixing this uh, situation, this relationship starts with individuals knowing they're not employees, they're businesses of one, mm -hmm. and that they serve the customer, they market their services to the customer, which is the employer. And when they learn how to do that better, the relationship's stronger, right? It becomes a win-win because you're partnering. You're not working for a company, you're working with a company. And so I have a lot of uh, experience and insight into that and how these two sides are changing in order for this to work. And that's why I love leveraging it so much. Like I said, there's nothing more exciting than, than empowering a group of people to be better for a group of employers. Amazing. So what advice would you give to HR leaders to, that want to leverage that dynamic on oh both, gosh. To, to both sides? Yeah, I think the first step right now is now more than ever, you have to think about that individual and what they're trying to make happen in, in their career. We're always studying, right? How do we retain employees? How do we find the best talent? How do we retain the best talent? And we're looking at things like benefits and, and development and that sort of thing. It's all important, but now more than ever, that can change in a day, in a month, in a year. People don't have these long-term career goals anymore. They're, they want the job that fits their life right now. And that is a whole new complex set of challenges for HR and recruiting. 
because I might assume that Sally Jones is just fine. You know, we've got her on this particular track, but what I don't know that's happening in her personal life is something shifted dramatically and she wants something entirely different. Sure. And so if I haven't built a way for my employees to be able to share that with me safely and even have solutions to help them evolve and, and shift with their needs, then I'm at risk. And some other company opportunity is going to take them away. It's never been easier now. People know every job is temporary, for better, for worse. There is none of that loyalty. So now more than ever, you have to be thinking about how connected you are to the needs of your employees. Mm. Why do you think that's changed? Because even, even in my time, even you only have to look on LinkedIn to see the average job. <laughs> Sure. time that someone's um st- uh, you can go on a company page right now on any company and see the average time that an employee stays there it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter now what do you think the reason is behind that so first of all it has to do with history you have a lot you see that companies could no longer offer lifetime and employment and that you know gets carried down you have parents who've shared stories of i was there 20 years and i lost my job and that is something that's traumatic so this group of individuals that are now working Many of them have these experiences and have remembered this and do not want to be vulnerable. Mm. Secondly, people are thirsting for knowledge, thirsting for new experiences. We're just that type of, of world now where we always want to be learning something new and growing much more than we did before. And so if that's not happening at my job, then I'm going to go find that elsewhere. And I can find that elsewhere and it's okay. It's more acceptable now than ever before. I mean, I remember way, way back, the first time I announced to my parents I was going to switch jobs, they had a fit. You're ruining your career. You haven't been there long enough. No one says that to you now. No one. And so the acceptance of it, as well as the the concern around staying someplace too long, I think that's what's really driving it. Yeah. Even when I'm speaking to senior HR directors or chief HR officers, the ones that have been in the companies for 10 years, one thing you realize when you look closer is that they've been in different roles Mm -hmm. in so they've been in a company for 10 years but no one has been in the same exact role they'll move into different they'll 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 be moving across to different functions different locations different departments and the businesses that can retain talent the ones that are constantly challenging them and constantly give allowing them the ability to go and try new roles as well um, so I can certainly see that. And um, I, I don't know how I stayed in my organization for so long, uh, given that period. I suppose it's just that I really enjoyed what I did. And I had an amazing team around me, which, of course, makes getting out of bed every day. Uh, so what can companies do then to help retain talent in, in the world where, you know, that's the type of dynamic that we're operating in? Yeah, well, I think you just said it. It's, it's so funny. And I, I just read a study that came out this week that talked about um, feeling accepted. So when you are part of a team where you truly feel accepted, that's where engagement happens. So we've been talking to companies for a long time about how important that is, that every single one of your employees can rate on a very high level that they feel accepted and included at the company. They feel safe. They feel comfortable. That is not something you want to leave. You, you know how hard it is to develop that. Mm. Going someplace new means starting that all over again. So if you are helping people and reminding people every day that isn't this nice, you know, isn't this a great team, um, it, it makes it so much harder for you to leave. Yeah. Whenever I meet up with my old, on my old team is that's the one thing that everyone says, you know, we miss the team. No one, we, we normally really talk about the work actually. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> everyone, everyone just said we miss the team, the fun yeah. we used to have. We, we all reflect on certain days out, team activities, etc. It's always the theme, isn't it? And, it is. Uh, but I'll tell you theme. too, some of my greatest, when I look back at the, the one job, for example, that I feel like I had the most professional growth in and just did my best work also happens to be the one where I had the tightest tribe. So I I think that happens too, right? I mean, you think about it, you were there 10 years, but what did you accomplish in 10 years? A ton. Yeah. Because you felt so reassured around the people that you were with. Mm. And also when you build that dynamic as a manager, I, I, you know, my manager before was always sort of a dictatorship, (laughs) you know, I'm your manager. So you have to do what I say. That was sort of the, the, uh, whereas my team, I tried to take a completely separate approach where, you know, I wasn't their friend, but I, 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 oh, actually, I was their friend. Actually, I was, I was really part of the team. It wasn't, there was no distinction between manager and employee. It was just us, mm-hmm. and that's the way we always had it. it was, you know, I, um, I always looked at it as I work for them. You know, yep. I work servant for, leadership. Yeah, Absolutely. I work for my team, and I would, I would get down in, in, <laughs> down in the trenches with the team. And what I found from doing it, I, I didn't realize it at the time. Actually, I'm looking back now, was that I never ever had to say to someone, "Do your work," or 
right. get on the phone and make some money or, you know, yeah. or all of these things that people talk about. I, I can't even remember a time I had to do that. If anything, it was a case of we were such a strong team that if someone was pulling down, everyone would come around and pick that person up. Yep. And if someone was struggling, it would. And it, I, I, I look back now and I see that just had it happened organically. People are trying to manufacture that environment right now, but I don't think you can. Um, no, you could do things to help it, but it's it's very difficult. But I think you said something important, which is you generally cared, and I feel the same way. So my team, that to me, you t you said it, they're your friends. I feel very close to my team, which means I care deeply about mm. how they are and is everything okay. I'm the day that I lose that worry for them, yeah. right? Then is the day that starts to fall apart. One of my biggest concerns when you think about scaling a business, right, is not losing that as well. And yeah. how am I going to, so, wow, you know, there's only X people on the team that I'm responsible for now as a leader. There's going to be 10 times that if I'm not worried about that, then I'm probably not going to be able to create that environment that you're talking about. So I always want to be a little uh, concerned and, and, uh, and caring and, and carry the responsibility of the weight of those people, because I think that's what makes it effective. Yeah. I think the hard part is that fine balance in between. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. It's really very, hard. Very hard <laughs> balance. I think we, that's, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> it is. We could spend have. an hour on that. <laughs> um, could, could you share, obviously you've, you've, you must have been a privy to some amazing transformations, some amazing journeys from the people that work with you within your organization, but also your customers, the, the, the people that subscribe to your platform that are members. Mm -hmm. Could you share a, a transformation or, or a project that you're most proud of? Yeah, and it's one that I've been working on recently. It's an incredible organization. It's uh, decentralized across the U.S. with 40 different locations and 40 different recruiting strategies. But there's synergies in terms of who they need to recruit. And so um, first we looked at it and said, how can we do this better? How can we leverage this synergy across all of you and build a community with their recruiters? So we built a whole private platform where their recruiters and HR leaders could converse virtually together and then started to drive the conversation on a daily basis. So we know that if we're bringing up problems, we're presenting ideas, we're sharing uh, knowledge that that would feed. And it was unbelievable. In the beginning, they were a little tentative, but very quickly they started to share and support one another. And they suddenly had peers, right? Even though they were alone in their one location, they weren't alone anymore. And anytime you create something like that, the transformation is just unbelievable. Um, couple that with the ability to share resources in terms of how they were recruiting and who they were recruiting for, you saw major cost savings, um, much less time to recruit, better quality candidates, the feedback from their executive team where we've never seen the volume and the quality of candidates that we're getting now. And it's because we took a decentralized group and essentially through virtual technology, centralized mm -hmm. them. So it was a powerful experience and um, the performances exceeded everyone's expectations, which is exciting. Amazing. It's the, as you said, it's the power of technology. Mm -hmm. It really <laughs> and, uh, is. It really now, is. That, that virtual community was a strange place a long time, like, you know, a few years back, but now it's actually so normal. You think about is. the way people WhatsApp, Messenger. Do you know what I was found the most surprising when I started this podcast is that 90% of chief HR officers communicate over whatsapp mm -hmm. with their teams over every over email over every, everything and that really I don't, I don't know why i should be surprised because i do that the same with my friends and family but to see that that you know that hr directors of the biggest companies in the world are operating their communication over social and over whatsapp it's there's no surprise why why what you've done is as, as being so, so successful was that something you guys built from the ground <coughs> upwards or was it a third party yeah no it's no, we used um, off-the-shelf technology, just pieced it all together. So mm -hmm. as I mentioned, uh, the front-facing part of us is to work with the job seekers, but obviously the other side of our business is to work with recruiting and HR organizations to help them improve how they connect with these people. So sure. um, we used really simple technology, pieced it all together for them. You know, in our case, uh, for the communication part, we used Slack. It was easy, just a private group. Sure. But what happens is where I think the difference is, is in how you develop them as a community how yes. we got them to bond, what content we shared with them, how we helped them solve their problems, remove their roadblocks really quickly, and then support one another. So it's, it's that process, but once it was up and running, it just kind of took a life of its own, which was great. Yeah, you just hit the nail on the head. The hardest part is the adoption 
and getting mm-hmm. people to use it. That's uh, it. Any of the big programs that, that, we, that, I, that I hear about that roll out across organizations, it's always the hard part is the adoption. Is there anything you could share in terms of how, what you did to help people adopt that and, and, get in and you know, take that leap and start those, yeah. com- those first few conversations? Yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely give it away because <clears throat> for the same reason that um, people say, how did you build your social following? Um, nothing exciting. It's just called Work It Daily. Consistency. <laughs> the name of the company oh, is the a, whole secret. I'm not going to lie. I didn't, I didn't even get it. Now I know. I was going to yeah, ask you that actually. So. Yeah. <laughs> but that is it. So all Fantastic. that you need to do is every day pay attention, shine light, and share. Amazing. And when you do that and you start those conversations and you contribute – it, then people make it a habit. Don't think about it. It's a natural part of their day. And so, but someone has to take ownership of that. Someone has to lead it, monitor it, know what's going to drive that engagement and that adoption. And that's where I do think we have a little bit of secret sauce sure. because we've been doing it for a of long course. time. But the, the real key is to do it every day. Amazing. Well, um, what advice would you, uh, one of the things that comes up quite a lot, everyone now is fighting for such a small pool of talent. Yeah. You know, so all organizations are all <clears throat> trying to get the same talent, especially right. if, if we talk about digital, the digital landscape. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give to HR leaders that are trying to stand out and trying to attract top talent in such a competitive landscape? Yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> the best advice I can give you is to not think that the solution is some sort of expensive um, you know, employment brand that requires hundreds of thousands of dollars in design and marketing strategy, you actually don't need any of that. I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying that. (laughs) Um, The truth is, is that your brand, the the employment brand that everybody wants to know about, that that top talent that you're dying to come work for wants to know about already exists. And then instead of creating it, you need to reveal it or what we say, document it. Because when you give them a 360 degree view, we call it the fishbowl effect. When you give that top talent a way to really walk all the way around your company through the digital landscape, you will get them to apply much much faster. And we know for a fact, studies show that that talent needs about 12 to 18 instances with your brand for them to form an opinion and actually apply to you. So all you need to do as a company is start to think about how you're going to document and reveal your brand on a daily basis. Again, work it daily. And I'll give you a great example. We worked with a company recently and we did a 30 day content challenge. And we said, all we're gonna do is drop content once a day, 30 days on five key areas. Uh, Because through our studies on work it daily, again, we know that people care about leadership, who's driving the bus, coworkers, who am I gonna be working besides, fun factor, how do they bond as a team, wow factor, what's the thing I'm gonna brag about if I work there to my peers, and then values and beliefs. Why, what do we stand for? And when you do that very simply, every single day, you will watch what happens. And we did a controlled experiment on Glassdoor with this, this company. And the, the unbelievable thing was, we were hoping for maybe we'll get 100% um, increase in followers, 200%. Over a 1,000% increase in followers on Glassdoor. Followers on Glassdoor are specifically following you because they're interested in working for your company. So my point is it doesn't have to be sexy or expensive or over the top. Just do it every day. I cannot stress that enough. And when you do that on a specific platform and just focus your efforts, you will get results. Amazing. So what, what's one sort of one actionable step that they could go and do tomorrow on one of the platforms you'd recommend? Yeah, absolutely. So if you just look at those five things, if you sit down, I tell people to create a bingo card, right? So one more time, leadership, Uh, co-workers, fun factor, wow factor, values and beliefs, sit down and come up with uh, something that you would like to share about your company in each of those areas. You've now just created one week's worth of content. Jump on a free tool like Canva. Yeah, I love throw Canva. Right? Throw up a picture, throw up a comment, boom, you've, you've got your content, post it. Just do it for one week. It's, it's yeah. what is that? A whole hour of brainstorming in five minutes a day. And, and <laughs> everyone's so caught up in the, uh, in the strategy, whereas they, they just need to focus on executing and putting thank it out you. there, right? That, that yes. is exactly why we named it Work It Daily. I'm so, I <laughs> laugh every time people think there has to be this big thing. Meanwhile, yeah. the everyday company is just working it daily and, and getting the views. That's why I do. I just, uh, every day, I don't want to call it failure, but I, I had a conversation yesterday. I was thinking about everyone, if you look at, the corporate world and if something goes wrong they call it a failure <laughs> if you look at science they call it experiments mm-hmm. and they do thousands of experiments yep. before they get a result but for some reason there's a negative uh, attached to it in in our in the corporate world where, so true and i suppose it's part of the culture as well because in certain companies 
failing is actually rewarded because people know that, you know, if, for example, if you're talking about Google or any of the innovative organizations, they're like, go, 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 as fast as possible. Whereas in some organizations that I work with, it's everyone seems they've got all these great ideas locked up, but they don't want to, they're scared to execute and take that. Mm. So very, very actionable advice. Thank you very much for sharing that as well. Um, if there's one message that you could give to other HR practitioners out there, what would that be? Mm, one message I would give them. Um, I think the one thing I would tell them right now is that if you think you have a handle on your employees and what their needs are right now, you don't. <laughs> I'm, I, I know that sounds crazy, Explain. but it's, yeah. <laughs> so, but as somebody who is working with millions of professionals out there who are telling us who they are and what they're looking for right now, the overwhelming feedback we get from them is that their company does not understand them. So why is that? And that's because of what we talked about earlier, which is they are not feeling um, like they are part of the family. They are, you have not hit enough touch points in their life for them to feel truly connected to your company. They're still just coming in, punching a clock. Maybe there's some good things going on, but you need um, deep advocates. You need ambassadors. You need employees that are so passionate about your company that these days, or you will lose them. There is a new level of, of engagement that you need out of your employees to make them loyal to you that we never had before. There's a new expectation on the part of, of the individual that you deliver that as an employer. So anyone that's saying, yeah, we've got this, you know, we know our employees, you don't. And you're going to probably see it in turnover. Mm. So where do, where do we start then? What's the, what's the one thing that we can do immediately that can start up? Of course, it's not a quick fix. Yeah. Uh, and, it's, <clears throat> and it also, I'm sure, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, probably applies differently to every single person it of absolutely what means, of what it, means to them that's, that's the common assumption yeah. which is wrong right everyone thinks yeah. you know it, for, for what for, for chris it could be work-life balance for yeah. someone else it could be buying a house or you know it could be so many different things to engage them what what one thing what, what can we do now to to start on that journey yeah. So I think the most important thing to do is to start small, believe it or not. Companies usually say, well, we're going to do a big event and we're going to build all this. Again, stop with the strategy, get in the game and do something immediate. And what it does is it say to your leaders, do some kind of activity on a much smaller scale with your team that allows them to bond and have fun. So I've seen companies, so for example, one company, they um, started playing Jenga together. And they had, they, that's a running thing that's happening. And those small water cooler moments where they're, they're playing their, that game and doing it, you know, at some point in the day, that's where that connection, that's where those conversations, that's where those moments of, oh, that's what's going on in that person's life. Um, you said it earlier, you were friends with your colleagues. There has to be a, more of a level of connection than ever before, because, you know, thanks to social media, we've actually become a little bit more disconnected, right? So I'm mm. um, creating those moments in the day where your people can have fun, connect, uh, and be human is going to make all the difference. And that is free. That is yeah, not hard no. to do. It's yeah. just, it's free and simple. And I'm not saying take an hour out of your day. I'm saying 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Guess what? They're probably wasting time on the internet anyways. At some point in time, peel back some of their, their boredom time and, and put it towards a group effort. It's so funny you say that again, because looking back, some of the things that we did, I had no idea at the time. I was quite young. So maybe I was naive. My naivety probably worked in my favor. You know, every, every month we used to do a, um, a thing where everyone on the team would bring in a, a meal from their from their family you know also you know their signature dish of say of their of their family and you know working in london we've got a very diverse team uh from different backgrounds different cultures and it was amazing just to have all these different dishes every once a month and it really brought people together on the team um and that again wasn't a plan actually that was just what i felt would be a good idea it wasn't you know, strategic um i can't can't uh, pretend that was the case um or even another thing we had is that anytime we hired a new people we had a team of between sort of 15 and 20 it fluctuated and uh we'd uh, invite them to the gym something silly even, both male female everyone it wasn't sort of a guy thing and uh in the summer we used to go to the park and work out together it, and it was in for the rest of the business we were i was crazy i was a crazy manager and it was like you know you just you need to stay distant from your manager you are the manager they are the employee whereas i was working out in the park yeah. with my team yeah <laughs> and you know come back so excited and everyone would be you know want to do more work so 
And that is in my, that's the point, right? Is that people by talking and connecting with one another, they want to help one another. There's less friction. They're more creative, all the problem solving. There's a company here um, in the U.S. out in San Francisco area called Cliff Bar. They make the, their private organic foods company. And I had the ability to go out and see them. And they have the most ridiculous amount of clubs at their, their corporate headquarters. It's like 50 or 60 clubs. I mean, you can be in any kind of club, whether it's knitting or biking or, and they said, the reason we did that, and anytime somebody wants a club, they can start a club here, is because the more clubs there are, there are more opportunities for people to feel included and connected. Yeah. And it shouldn't surprise us they have such low turnover. People don't leave. Don't leave. Why, Why would they? they? Yeah. Why would they? Why would you? And I think it's also another thing as well. One of the things that we used to do with the, uh, the food part is other departments would come and start doing it. <laughs> so I'd never met an IT guy before that day, or I'd never spoken exactly. to the guy in marketing or production. Mm-hmm. And then we grow, all grew very good relationships as well. So you're right. And these things don't cost billions of pounds. They don't. don't cost pounds. It just takes a bit of time and a bit of effort to, <laughs> to put it forward and do it. And actually just do it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it's not going to hurt. It's not going to, no one's going to no one's going to get upset about it. So yeah, someone's going to tell you what to do next time instead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they will. And you know what? That's, again, that is exactly what happened. Yeah. We, that kind of led to other, why don't we do more of that? Mm-hmm. But in a different way, mm-hmm. um, something that the uh, chief HR officer of Edelman that I was speaking to said the other day is that sometimes he just gets his team and says, guys, let's go for a walk. Right. Let's go around a block. And it's, an initi- it's also an initiative that Unilever pushed, which was sort of get outside, where it doesn't cost anything. No, Let's just get the team and just go for a walk. In the middle of the day, just go for a walk and have a chat. Such a small... He said the level of engagement in his team is just skyrocketed. We do that here too. We actually have some amazing grounds that we walk in. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so much fun. I wish I could say the same. I'm in central London, so it's a bit, no- <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit noisy right next to Tower Bridge to go for a walk. Unless you want to get into some tourist photos, then, 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 then you're good. <laughs> well, photobombing, that's not a bad thing, right? Jumping well, in there. <laughs> just get the team out and get them photobombing, guys. There you go. That's, that's the, new, the new thing we're going to be doing. And don't blame me if it goes wrong. I want that picture. <laughs> you want that picture? <laughs> um, well, look, that leads us quite nicely onto the quick fire round where I'm going to ask you five questions and you have no more than 30 seconds to give us some amazing <gasps> Amazing answers. Are you okay. ready? I'm going to try. Are you sure? <laughs> um, what was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming the CEO and founder of, of your own organization? I was afraid that it might ruin other parts of my life. I didn't want it to disrupt my relationship with my husband, with my children, and I really needed to work through and make sure that those relationships would stay secure. Fantastic. Uh, what's the best piece of business advice you've ever received? It was that the best thing that you can do to grow your business is always find ways to scale yourself. Whatever you can do to scale yourself is going to give you more time back and you're going to be able to do more. Constantly be learning. Definitely good advice there. Um, What's one book do you'd recommend for our audience and why? Oh my goodness. There's so many good ones. Doesn't have to be HR. Of course. (laughs) No, no. Yeah. Um, Oh, that's tough. It could be more than one. You know what? I, I did just read um, Option B by Sheryl Sandberg and Adam Grant, a powerful, powerful book uh, about surviving and uh, was wonderful. Fantastic. I'll definitely link that in the description. Um, could you share one in- internet resource that you use to increase your own productivity or, or, or stay up to date with current events? Oh my gosh. I'm a voracious reader. So I read um, online on Inc. every day, Fast Company, um, obviously my own LinkedIn feed. I just, uh, I'm always reading those resources daily. I seem to get something out of it. Fantastic. Um, Could you share one thing about your business that most excites you today? Uh, That we are growing at a rate that surpassed even our projected plans. So we are getting new subscribers, net new subscribers uh, at an incredible rate. And uh, that means that we should hit critical mass and be able to, you know, showcase them to employers much faster than we expected. Amazing. And uh, could you give us uh, one parting piece of guidance and also the best way for our listeners to reach you? Yeah. So I think the best piece of advice I could give people is that uh, we're so busy working in our jobs that we don't spend time working on our careers. And if you make it a habit and a priority to work on your career, literally every day, we, we on average waste 50 minutes or more a day on Facebook, social media. If you were to take just 10 minutes of that 
and make it a habit to work it daily, I hate to say it, you're really going to see the difference. You're going to feel more grounded and more centered in your career, which leads to much greater professional satisfaction, which makes you a better person overall. And that is key, right? When we're happy with ourselves, we can do more, we can be more. So I would encourage everybody to do that. Uh, the best way to reach me, obviously, uh, is you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. It's just forward slash JT O'Donnell, or you can reach me here at Work It Daily. We've got a, a contact us page and uh, we've got people manning social media. You can give me a shout out on any social platform that you want um, and I will respond. Fantastic. Well, look, you've been an amazing guest. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, guys, make sure you head over to hrdleaders.com. There you'll find all of the show notes on episode, everything we've been talking about, all of the resources. Um, JT, thank you again for sharing you. your very fascinating journey with our, with our listeners today. And uh, I wish you all the best until we next speak. Oh, thank you. You too. Thank you, everyone.